Hi everyone. Today is Monday, March the 26th, and this is the second day in our short week. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinger Pro Platform. My apologies about being so late. We had some basketball meetings uh, this morning that uh, we were a part of, and um, they just ran kind of long. So here we are. What are we looking at? First, we take a look at the ES. We can see a very nice dip right off of, what's this low here? 52.72. We're going to be watching that number as the key zone. Notice dip buying still in full force, right? We are not even nearly this 8 exponential, not even nearly here, this 8 exponential. And notice, here are our lines in the sand. We have a key support zone at 52.15. We talked about that yesterday. Support today, I'm going to give it a little bit below that 72 and 68, and then resistance all the way up to the top. Notice we are above the high of the prior day, but just barely. Traders are going to say, listen, I either have to get above this zone and stay there, and then I'm going to continue to buy, or I'm going to fade. That number is going to be about 5,300. We're going to have a, a daily level that's going to really sort of impact how the traders are looking at the price action. Right first, let's do it without the VWAP. And we can see yesterday I said, hey, listen, reversion to the mean. What do you want to do? You want to wait for the markets to stop heading lower. Well, guess what? They didn't do that until the day was done. All right. And in the pre-market, now we've got overnight traders being mostly long. They're going to want to cover into the part of the day, you know, where we have the U.S. open. So what does the range tell us? The range formation says, hey, listen, reversion to the mean occurred yesterday on this four-hour formation. Now we're bouncing potentially into uh, prior resistance. Let's put it up there. 53.10. Or it fades. Now notice what happens when we start getting up above here. Look for the price action to fail to hold higher. That's going to give you the space where you go, I better cover. Or maybe I'll take myself a nice little short. That's what you're going to watch for. All right, let's take a look at the corresponding SPY. Let's go to the daily first, right? You can see us breaking to the top of the channel, right? If I changed the slope of the channel, but not the size of the channel, you can see that it's right there at the top. Also, resistance, support, resistance, resistance. What are they going to try and do here? They're going to try and sell it off. 522 opens up at that first measure of resistance. If the traders get above there, folks, it's going to be a buying event, right? Into what? Into resistance. What are we looking at here, right? It came up and over, fading to support. We're still at the top. It is still a buy the dip event. But when you buy the dip, you have to go, hmm, if I'm buying the dip, I better take some profit since I'm making a series of lower highs. This is what we want to watch for, okay? So again, overnight traders largely long. They're going to come into the resistance and they're going to go, you know, probably not take some profit. But at the same time, take a look. Slope of momentum is up. And if the slope of momentum is up and we are sitting in a bullish formation, they're going to buy the dip. So we could have a series of higher lows as well as lower highs as we compress and wait for the next move. All right, let's look at the corresponding future. Wait, didn't I just do that? Good. Golly, I am brain dead. All right, let's go to the cues. All right. Here we're looking at cues on the daily, right? Still in a buy the dip. Just a savage dip right here. Came into the 30 and held on tight. Now bouncing again off of this region. But what are we doing, right? Do we have higher highs? Oh, that'd be no. That's why this is in yellow. We don't have higher highs. Do we have higher lows? Well, yes. That's why it's neutral to bullish. So here in the momentum, it says still buy the dip, buy the dip, but take profit as it gets up into the resistance zones. Do not expect a big breakout to the north. Not, not very likely in my mind. Okay, what's momentum say on the four hour? It says, hey, reversion to the mean. Momentum did that for us. Trend says, I'm still holding the buy the dip event, right? This is tech. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at an upward sloping eight, upward sloping Momentum event, I'm going to look for prior highs 
to say, I got to take some profit. And right now that's 437 and some change. So if per happenstance, we get up over this 447.50, the sellers are going to have to buy to cover. And that's when we'll see the higher levels, right? Did we look at the zones? Yes. Same sort of thing. 447, 448. These are the measured moves to the north to give us that upside pressure. And that's what we'll stare at, right? We could have a largely sideways day today. All right, taking a look at the cues, same sort of thing, buy the dip. Notice, positive momentum. It means that there are going to be buyers underneath, right? Where is this new number? Well, they broke through that level and then quickly recovered. So here's what you want to think about. If it comes into this 430 area, 440, and it doesn't hold, but it fades, it better recover post haste or there's going to be a problem with price, right? If it comes in and bounces, we're going to have that nice sideways chopping off. And here's what sideways motion does in a chart. When you've got sideways motion like this, it slows momentum down. And when momentum slows, you get mean reversion. It allows the moving averages to catch up to price. And then we're off to the races again. Same sort of thing potentially looking at today. All right. For uh, 18,600, 18,620 maybe. That looks like breakout event. Overnight traders, again, are primarily long. So they're going to want to cover, right? What do you want to watch for? That high that fails. The high that fails is going to tell you where you want to position your short, right? On top of that, it's going to give you a volatility band that goes, yeah, that's kind of high. And then you just look for price. Yesterday, uh, Dolby and uh, Hogue and I were on Strategy Lab on Top Step TV. And Dolby said something great. He said, hey, how many times do you draw a line on your chart and you never trade at it? Uh, bad habit. That's a rule you got to break. Draw your lines. Trade your lines. If you're not going to trade the lines, don't draw the lines. Okay? Simple as that. All right. Let's take a look at the YM. YM on uh, the daily first. Okay, this one, Savage Fade, it's still in mean reversion, but it is gapping to this north end. And look at the pretty bounce right off of this line in the sand that we had somewhere around 39,730, right? 735 ish, right? We know when it comes in there, uh oh, that's range support. I think I'm going to buy, but notice what the chart has not done. The chart has not filled the gap. Ooh, it looks like it did actually, didn't it? All right, let's clone this line and then move it up here. Yeah, maybe just by a hair's breadth, okay? It's got to get past that for buyers to get more enthusiastic about buying or they won't, all right? This was very interesting price action, uh, very weak in, in my mind. But in the end, four-hour formation still says, hey, listen, you got to buy these dips. Look, see? Momentum circling back. Trend line's flat. This 30 is flat. Momentum cresting like this. If it's flat and momentum is in negative territory, you're still going to make lower lows. But there is a limit to those lower lows. And that number, instead of our 733, maybe 685, right? So that's what we're looking at. Let me go back here. Make that range support 685. And that's what we look at in terms of setting up these particular trades. Uh, four hour formation, let me double check. Upward momentum, flat moving average tells us that we could have a higher test, right? So don't think about it this base. Say, all right, let's move it to 845. We know these are round numbers, so the dots don't matter on the other side. These are round numbers. Let's wait for it to get up to that 850 ish area before we go, hmm, maybe I short that, right? Maybe it ends up being a nice range for us to trade during the day. All right, let's take a look at oil. Today is Tuesday, so we get the API report with the EIA tomorrow. This thing is just moving like textbook, right? Up above this 80. We had, you know, the Red Sea pirates back at it again, you know, nothing. And then um, uh, Putin says, hey, he's going to keep pumping and blah, blah, blah. Trade's coming right in. Listen, if this keeps running up, we're going to have hot inflation numbers. And hot inflation numbers are simply not what we want to see at all, period. So what are we looking at? Range by the 80s. 
cell, the 82s. This is really where we are currently sitting right now, right? If we take a look at the overall formation, we're sitting sort of right in the middle, right? So it's sort of like 50-50. When it's 50-50 and the trend is up like this, you look for the deeper dips to buy, and then you take your profit because we're having lower highs, right? In the grand formation, the only reason these things are yellow is because they're lower highs, okay? That's, that's the only reason that would be yellow. So you're understanding what is going on there. From a four-hour perspective, momentum, flat, noisy, sideways, a little bit bullish. So you're still going to watch for dip buying at these moving averages. Let's add another line, shall we? Let's do it. Let's put one right here. And this one will tell us if we are holding, yeah, that's the better line, if we are holding the floor of support around 81. All right, and that's really what we're after. Let's take a look, lastly, at gold. It's rotated over to the, okay, or maybe not, <clears throat> the present contract. Sitting here, four hour formation, you know, still pretty sideways, right? We take a look, this is, all right, well, that should be yellow. You know the rules. It does have a breakaway, but now it's sitting in um, a congestion zone, right? Congestion zone. And that's really what we're looking at. We want to see 4152, the range support, 4152, the range resistance, uh, you know, 2200 to 2220. So I'm going to add 2220 in there. Mm, come on, mister. 2220 to 2238. All right. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, folks, I'll see you on the platforms. Good luck trading today.